Good morning, boys and girls. The last time I spoke to you, I told you a story about the crowded house. And today I'm going to talk about the cheat's house. Do you know what cheating is? Well, it's when you do something dishonest. Maybe you're in school and you're doing a piece of work and you're not too sure what the answer is. But you take a wee sneaky look at your neighbour's book and you can see he has written down the answer. So you just write down the same answer and then you give that piece of work to the teacher and you pretend you've done it yourself. That's cheating. Or perhaps you're playing a board game and you really want to win. So you just take your counter and you move it on a couple more squares so that you don't come down the tail of that snake. That's cheating. Cheating is when you deceive people by being untruthful. Now, the man in today's story was a cheat. I wonder if you can guess who he is. I have some clues here. You look at the clues carefully, and when you think you know who I'm talking about, you shout out loudly. In fact, if you shout out loudly enough, maybe I'll even hear you and call you back in. Here's the first clue. It's a son. And I can see straight away that somebody's been adding up money. And the sum has been marked right. But the answer is definitely not right. Because the answer should be eight pounds. And somebody has made it ten pounds. That's the first clue. The second clue is, oh, it's a bulging purse. It's absolutely full of money. In fact, it's so full of money that it will hardly close. Look at that. That's the second clue. Now, if you still haven't got it, I think the third clue might really help you. It's a very little one, but here it is. It's a little tree. Have you got it now? Well, in case you haven't, the fourth clue is a teacup. You've got it now, haven't you? Yes, the man's name was Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus was a cheat. You see, he worked for the Romans collecting taxes. Well, everybody has to pay taxes. Every adult has to pay taxes. We pay this money to the government and then they use our money maybe to have our rubbish collected or to repair the, the roads or to build hospitals, things like that. But nobody in Palestine wanted to pay taxes to the Romans because, you see, they had just marched into the country with their army. And they had taken over. They had set themselves up as the bosses. So people thought that Zacchaeus was a traitor for working for them. But they also suspected that he was a cheat. Now, they couldn't really prove anything. But they thought, and they were probably right, that when Zacchaeus worked out how much they should be paying in taxes, he added on a little bit and then he kept that extra bit for himself. So Zacchaeus had become very rich. He had a big fancy house with servants to work for him. He rode around in a chariot. The people really resented Zacchaeus. They thought he was only rich because he had cheated them and taken their money. When he passed by, they'd turn away or give him dirty looks. So Zacchaeus was a bit sad. He seemed to have everything. A big house, a lovely chariot, lots of money. But he knew most people hated him. And Zacchaeus had an even bigger sorrow. You see, he didn't know or love God. Now one day... Jesus came to the town of Jericho, where Zacchaeus lived. When Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was in town, he thought, I'd quite like to see Jesus. 
Maybe he could tell me about God. So he set off, running as fast as he could through the streets, until he came to a big crowd of people. Jesus must be in the middle of the crowd. Everyone had gathered round him because they wanted to hear him talk, or maybe to be healed of an illness, or even just to be close to him. But unfortunately, Zacchaeus had a problem. You see, he was a very small man, and he was right at the back of the crowd, so he couldn't even see Jesus. He tried to push people out of the way, but the crowd was packed tight, and no one would let him through. Then Zacchaeus had an idea. He noticed a big, leafy sycamore tree just down the street a little bit. He knew that Jesus and the crowd were moving in that direction. So he ran on ahead and he climbed up the tree. He thought, I'd be so high up that I'm bound to see Jesus when he passes under the tree. He didn't worry that he looked silly or that people would laugh at him. He just scrambled up as high as he could. He so wanted to see Jesus. Sure enough, the crowd with Jesus amongst them moved down the street right under the sycamore tree. And then the most amazing thing happened. Jesus stopped right under the sycamore tree. Jesus looked up straight at Zacchaeus and he spoke to him. He said, Zacchaeus, this evening I'm coming to your house for my tea. Wow. Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. In fact, he knew all about him. And when the crowd started to complain and say, Jesus, don't be going to his house. He's a sinner. He's a cheat. Jesus said, I have come to find people who are lost and bring them back to God. Zacchaeus was delighted. That's what he wanted. He knew he'd done bad things. He wanted to be forgiven and to know God. So he scrambled back down the tree and he took Jesus home to his house for tea. He was so happy to be with Jesus so that Jesus could teach him about God the Father and heal his sinful heart. And you know, meeting Jesus changed Zacchaeus completely. He knew now that Jesus loved him. He knew that Jesus had forgiven him for the wrong things he'd done. And now he had Jesus as his very best friend. So he said, Jesus, you know that extra money I took from people when I collected their taxes? Well, I'm going to pay it all back. In fact, I'm going to pay them back four times as much as I took and I'm going to give half of my money and my nice things to the poor. Because from now on, I want to live for you. Zacchaeus didn't want to be greedy anymore. He didn't want to be a cheat anymore. He knew that having God's son as his saviour and friend was far more important than money or anything else. Wasn't it wonderful? how Jesus just stopped directly under the tree. And he knew Zacchaeus' name without asking. He knew that Zacchaeus was lonely and wanted to meet him. And he even knew the wrong things that Zacchaeus had done, but he loved him anyway. I think that's just wonderful. And you know, it's the very same for you. Jesus knows you. He knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows who your friends are. He knows whether you're good at running or swimming or singing. He knows what you got for Christmas. The Bible tells us he even knows how many hairs we have on our head. Isn't that just incredible? And Jesus knows when you're doing good things, kind things, when you're being generous or helpful. He knows when you're happy. 
He knows when you're worried or when you're sad. And he even knows when you do wrong things. Maybe things like telling a lie or losing your temper or being unkind to your brother or sister. He knows all about that and he still loves you. And you know, he wants to be your friend. He wants to forgive you and to change you just like he did for Zacchaeus. So will you remember that? that Jesus knows everything about you and he still loves you. You know, we all do things that we're a bit ashamed of or we think thoughts that we wouldn't really want anyone else to know about. But Jesus does know and he still wants to be your friend and forgive you. So I do hope that you will ask Jesus to be your very best friend and to forgive your sins because he is the most wonderful friend that anybody could ever have. Now, I wonder, would you like to make a little bookmark to remind you of that? You could cut out a figure just like that. And in fact, if you cut it out double, you could have an extra floppy little bit on the back and that's very useful for marking your place in a book. And then once you've cut it out, you could colour in some clothes, type of clothes that you wear, give the figure the hair that you have and the colour of eyes that you have, make the figure look as like you as you can. And then when you've done that, you can write on the back of it, Jesus knows all about me. I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you soon. God bless you.